<laughs> All right, I am calling to order. This is what is actually an emergency meeting because we haven't even announced it. It was just agreed to a few hours ago um, of the EDC on July 27th at 8 a.m. The agenda item is simply to discuss the recommendations of Joe and Deborah and Jill and the group that came back. And you've all gotten a copy of it. I have just the two parts of it, uh, this part, the two parts of Deb's memo that just has the, um, the, you know, the conclusions of the group, which I think are, are fine. And there's a couple of little tweaks we might wanna make. The first part is is how should we pr process it, and the second part is really what would be on the application. Um, Do you see the part that has the additional points? Uh, I didn't put that in because I, okay. I the, so the additional points were good context. But we all saw them, but I don't think that they were. I think this is the part that we have to decide on and recommend to the select board. The additional points I think were were things that might go beyond this, and, um, and that we I wouldn't decide today. No, but I think oh, there's two of them that um, affect this. So I'm okay, all right. Well, we'll just all right. Well, why don't you say say what those are? Um, the uh, ten hours versus fifteen and twenty hour cutoff. I think that's in your document. That that's in isn't that in the? Uh, it is here. Number right six. Here. Could you explain? Could you explain what you mean yeah. by that? Well, well hold on. Before one. she does, just let's so okay. we can get the, all the information on the screen. And what? So that one is included on here. We'll discuss it. And what's um, the other one? The other one was that um, about how we came, how it came to be was this kind of, oh, if if we run out of money, we'll just get more. And but there's no commitment from any organization to say, OK, we're going to put in more money. And um, I did want us to just look at the that the hub felt that um, that we shouldn't be seeking funds uh, from the public you know, because they're seeking funds from the public. I think there are several organizations that, you know, seek well, funds from the public and, and you shouldn't say, no, it can only be through one. Well, I think, okay, um, keep, keep those things in mind. What I want to make sure of, because we have a time frame, is that we make the decisions on what's on the agenda, which is how should we run? We've already approved the amount of money. I, I don't feel comfortable in an emergency meeting approving more or reducing the amount. Yeah, I know you're not suggesting that. Right. So therefore, the decision we have in front of us is we have $45,000. She's texting. Uh, we have $45,000. The question is, how do we want to administer the program? And then we would take both the recommendation for the 50000 45 plus 5, mm -hmm. and the recommendation for how we operate and bring that to the select board. So let's do that first. And then, Deb, let's come back to those other points and or or, or bring it up if, if we think that it's affecting these things. So we've all had a chance to look at this. Are there comments about, I think from my perspective at least, are there areas of disagreement or, or question or, or con, um, a confusion? Maybe we start with the one, Marion, that you were asking about the 10 hours. You want Yeah, I just wasn't clear what, is that that someone who is was working 10 hours a week before this happened or someone who lost up to 10 hours a week of work time? I wasn't sure what that meant. I can clarify that, John. Uh, uh, at the meeting at that point was discussed and uh, initially I was I didn't think that it was necessary to identify 10 hours until I think it was um, Judy from the end indicated that they have employees that uh, often only work one day a month and so because I had said well you know why why bother putting that in considering that aspect, where there are employees that do work less than 10 hours a week. Um, it, it seemed to me that uh, somebody who comes in once a month for a few hours shouldn't, I wouldn't think in my opinion, be eligible for this uh, or in the, equal to somebody who works 20, 30, 40 hours a week. So that's why that's put in it. And that, and to answer your question specifically, it's the hours that they had been working prior to the flood. In other words, they were working a minimum in excess of 10 hours. hours a week okay. prior to the flood. 
Deb, John, I think we need to clarify that then on this document. It should say 10 hours a week, not just 10 hours. And, and I think it should say, you know, was working. Yeah. Like yeah. This document hours. wasn't designed for something just to vote on. It was right, Deb reporting right. back on the discussion. We're yeah. going to refine it. And Deb, do you want to you want to comment on the 10 hours? Because I know you said it was a different number. Or Well, um. I, I just want to uh, talk about how that affects our numbers and ability to put out the amount that we were talking about. Um, originally, the inn said, you know, it's only 30, 40 people who will come to you, but out of that, many of them won't be coming to you because they work under the hours that we were talking about. But then we reduce the hours, which means more, you know, it will increase that more. But I just... Um, I want us to consider this and, and not that I am not sensitive to the fact that they lost, a, you know, two days worth of work, but if there are people who lost two weeks worth of work um, and they're getting only a portion of what they made by the 500 versus somebody who worked two days and is getting a complete replacement of those hours and then it may mean that some people who lost two weeks worth of work don't get it because we don't have enough money. That's my concern. So I think, so, that, yeah, I think to address that concern, the issue before us, and we we can decide it here. This is the EDC. We had delegated to Deb and, and Joe to to do exactly what they did, which is great. But the, the, the discussion for us, I, I think, unless we want to change the construct, which I would recommend against. I really like the, the X hours per week as a cutoff and the businesses can confirm that. That's a very elegant way of doing it. I think the question is, what is X? And yeah, Deb, your point is, right. we think, I, let me just make sure I understand. We think that if X were 15 to 20, which it was in part of the discussion, that the inn would have no more than, less than 30 to 40 people. And so my sense is, is that if we did pick, let's say 15, we, we, we might get 30 people or 35 people from the inn. I think we have a sense that the, we know that the farmer's market folks are going to want to apply. We need to talk about whether they would qualify. Um, and because technically based on this, they don't qualify. Um, That's in the points as well. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, I, I think it's important to note, John, that um, uh, what the inn stated was at the initial meeting when we were discussing the inn being involved with this program, the number of 300 employees at the inn came up. And then they went back, looked at it, and realized that other than 30 or 40 people, the rest of the staff was, in fact, working and getting a check even during the flood. They were doing different things. Like, for example, the golf course was still open. The health club was still open. They had a pop-up restaurant going on. And then there were people on staff that were cleaning up and doing other stuff. So they were actually getting paid. It's not a question of how many hours they were getting. I, I thought I understood that they were getting their regular pay, other than the 30 or 40 people who were identified yesterday. It had nothing to do with how many hours they were working. It was just, they were getting paid and that's it. So, so I think- I wanted yeah, to, I, yeah, I mean, here, here's where I'm thinking of it, just as far as, as, quote, fairness. I would like to see that everybody who applies, you know, who's been working um, half time or more gets at least a portion of their money paid, you know, gets a portion, which is the $500. I almost would prefer to have it be in two tiers, meaning like, you know, we're going to go through the first application process. And then if we still have money left, that people who've only worked, who were working one day a week can then apply. But I think it should be closer to 15 or more hours because I, I, my concern is that if it's, if it's 30 from um, the inn and 30 from another, and then we're not, just not going to have enough money. But anyway. Greta and then thought. Todd. Hey guys. Um, so I, I'm wondering if that number 10 hours per week should, instead of it referring to what they usually work, just maybe we just give an X number of hours missed due to the floods. Um, you know, maybe it's, uh, to be eligible must have missed at least 15 hours of work due to the floods. I, I don't know. That's all. Per week. 
per week um or total so because we're considering well it's that's i mean for some okay so for some of the woodstock businesses it was about a week and a half of closures right and then we look at other places like the like the farmer's market who it's months so I don't know. I just, I just kind of think it's a not per week thing. It's like if you missed um, at least fifteen hours of work due to the flooding, you are eligible for this. Okay. All right, Todd, and then Marion. Todd, you're muted. Thanks. I think that's that's not a bad idea at all, Greta. Um, I have like my normal anxiety building of irritation, so I just want to say that. Two things. One is the inn's not putting any money. It's disgusting because, first of all, there's days that Woodstock residents can't even go in the inn and buy a drink or have a have a sandwich because they closed it off, right? Um, they run a giant corporation. I'm not familiar with their books, but if I can go out and get a million dollars from a bank right now, the inn can go out and get 50 grand from a bank, you know, and take care of their employees. So what we're doing is we're because we know the inn's the largest employer, we're diluting every other person. So I say. F the in and they can take care of those employees or not and deal with the PR that because if those employees quit, there's plenty of places around town that could use them. Plenty of house cleaners, plenty of cooks, plenty. If, if you don't take care of your employees, so be it. Jeff Jeffrey's rest uh, store probably can't the way the in can. We talked about that. I, I mentioned that in the last meeting. So, so I just want to focus on the fact that we're diluting the shares of what we, what small amount we have to give because a fairly large corporation um, is refusing to step into the plate. And, and again, I would advocate excluding the in and putting the onus on them to help cover the employees or come back to the bargaining table and give us a better deal because everyone else is suffering uh, because of this stance they have. All right, um, Marion and then Patrick, and then Joe. Um, I got so engaged with what Todd was saying that I, I forgot what I was going to say, but I will say just briefly in regard to that, I, I don't think we can have a personal opinion about that, but I just feel like we should have like a, a set policy that is as even handed as possible. And I don't think it makes any sense. I mean, the, you know, the in, I don't want to get into arguing about the in because we don't have a lot of time, but like the, they kept most of their employees working. They have some part-time people that they are handling differently. I don't know how they're handling it, but I don't think it's I just feel like, first of all, I feel like this program was initially designed from an EDC point of view to help with uh, retention of employees, which I think is kind of past at this point um, because people are open again. But I still think it's valuable to support the employees. I I, I wholeheartedly support that idea. Um, but that's kind of where we've moved to is just trying to be a good steward for the community and and support people who lost work. And so I think like I don't really love the idea of making a judgment about like how how one business is running their business uh, in this context if it impacts the people that the employees that were this is sort of shifted from supporting the business to supporting the employees I guess is what I'm saying yeah Patrick and then Joe uh, I, I, just to put things in perspective too if somebody fifteen hours if they worked if they got twenty dollars an hour it's three hundred dollars uh, we're talking a lot of these people who were out of work for uh a week and a half so you know we need to we need to we need to look at the the measurement here and understand that you know somebody who lost three hundred dollars versus somebody who's going to not be working potentially for months uh you know most likely they'll go somewhere else but you know just we need to look at the dollar numbers here and not just you know as we're putting these numbers together uh you know understand we're not talking about a lot of money that that the short-term people lost, but the people who who have worked full time, you know, clearly have lost, you know, uh, a decent amount of money. So I don't know whether we should be doing this at 15 hours uh, or higher. You know, you had to have lost 20 hours a week uh, to make it a little more realistic uh, to the people who have actually been more hurt than the part-time workers. Uh, Joe, does that make any sense? Yeah, it does. Uh, and I have a suggestion for how to deal with it. Joe and then Greta. Well, I, I think um, Todd's comments should harken back to one of the statements I made during our original meeting, 
um, what we experienced, one of the things we experienced during this flood was the inn shut down. There was nothing going on there. Um, there were no, no guests at all. And that, I think, should be an eye-opener to how valuable a healthy, uh, well-run inn is to the rest of the community. And, and given where HR at yesterday's meeting, I think prior to it said, no, it wasn't 300 uh, em employees impacted, it was only 30 or 40. Um, I, I think it would be a mistake not to embrace and not include the in as big as they are, and they are the number one employer in and 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 uh, money generator in the town for everybody. Um, I think it'd be a mistake to say no. Let them get their own money. And as far as what Jill said about getting money, I don't think she referred to going. She did say something about the housing project and maybe taking money from that and you and use it next year, but I I specifically heard her say Did we the we'll just raise more money and take care of them. So uh, those are two points I think are, are important to make, particularly the one about the end. I don't I think it'd be a big mistake to say, no, you can't you can't play in this game. It's it's I think that's a wrong thing to do. I've lost track a little bit of who's raised their hand. Is it Deb? Deb? I'm at the, I'm at the, am I next? I thought it was yeah, fine. Deb, yeah. Greta, and Patrick's hands are up. So let's do those three in order. And then I just want to make a comment. Deb, go ahead. I mean, I, I am, I am frustrated. I would love for the end to step up um, because I know that a lot of their people also lost their home. There are people in, in, in the um, park that lost their home. And at the same time, I I do want to go check check to what uh, Joe said, but um, it, it's not going to happen. So it's a matter of moving forward. And I and EVC will not look good if we exclude the workers at the end. I just think that that's going to be bad and, and blow back on us. So given that, I also think again running the numbers that Patrick ran, you know, uh, ten hours, uh, you know, or t uh, twenty hours total, or whatever we were coming up with, somebody who only worked that is getting a complete replacement, as opposed to somebody who might have lost part. You know, that only replaces a part, and I just want to make sure that the people who are only getting a part get that first, and and maybe period. You know. Um, so for me, it really feels like it should be, if we're going to do total hours, then it should be a total of 30 hours or above. So that's 15 hours per week. Um, so that we make sure all of those people get paid. The other thing was, yes, Jill mentioned, um, maybe we can forego a certain portion of an EDC grant to replace it, or maybe the hub can raise more money. And I did send a, an, a message to her later saying, okay, is that a commitment? And she said, no, that's not a commitment at this time. So it's not, we have 90. And if we need more for this program, the hub will put up. And they were very specific about saying, we don't want anybody to be raising money separately for a similar thing than we're doing. You know, so it, it there's a, you know, we, if we're going to just stay to 90, let's get the people pay, partially paid. And everybody in the meeting was in agreement on the Woodstock farmer's market that by the time people start getting their money, you know, is going to be very close to the time that those people are out of work so that they should be included in the program. Greta and then Patrick and then me. I agree with Deb um, as far as if we if we up the number of hours missed for work. I mean, across the board, everyone's making different hourlies and we can't compare what everyone's losses are. But I think if we talk about it more as you don't have to use the word stimulus, but like, like a stimulus, we're putting out a certain amount of money, no matter what, everyone who's eligible is getting the same amount. And that's what it is. The EDC just wants to support the workforce. And here it is. I don't think we, um, you know, uh, beyond making sure that someone, um, really you know was affected by a certain amount of lost hours i don't think we need to split hairs too much patrick and then me uh to, to joe's comment about the inn 
everybody was closed, not just the inn. So whether the inn had guests or not, nobody could be open. So I think that's a moot point. No, we weren't yes. closed, Patrick. We weren't closed from most of the time the inn was. We were but, you, but, but you, well, how did you have, how could you be open with water, with no water? Well, you know, but, we, but anyway, that the point, the point being is, no, it is, that it is the, 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 no the, the point being is most everybody was closed. If you were the only one open, Joe, God bless you. But my point is, the the end being closed didn't really affect business because most businesses were closed. Uh, but I, I think that the we no, we can't exclude them. I think that's a mistake. Uh, I think we just set the hours at at the right level, the missed hours at the right level, so that the right people get the money. Uh, you know, uh, people who who lost the most should be the ones uh, more eligible to get the money. So if we we put the hours up high enough, we don't put any any uh, qualification of where you work, just how many hours you missed. Uh, I think that would be the, the smarter way to go. It. And, that, and that way we don't, we don't, we're not pointing anybody out. Agreed. Okay, so, um, uh, all right. So I think it sounds like, I, I agree. We, I think we shouldn't exclude the in because I think that they retained 200, and, it sounds like they retained on their payroll while they were closed, 260 out of 300 employees. And I don't think there were any, there weren't many businesses certainly who retained that percentage of people. Um, so I think to exclude them because they only kept 260 is wrong. So I just, but, just I think, I think there's no point in talking about it because yeah. I'm the only one who thought that way. But, but I would also say that out of that conversation, becoming let's increase the hours satisfies oh. many things for me. And that makes me feel great. So I don't want to exclude the end either. I'm just trying to get yeah, counterpoint. Yeah stuff no know? no no one no one thought you were trying to, yeah you were you were looking yeah i understand i am mad okay. at them but uh but i'm, I'm our this is great conversation it's the uh, hours is great for me i i am concerned greta i want to go back to one comment that you made that you know this is you said we wouldn't use the word stimulus but we're really just sort of trying to you know support the employees um the, the i am nervous the further away we get from replacing lost wages uh, because the community has been very clear and this is prior to your coming on the EDC but we've done surveys twice once at the beginning of COVID and once I don't know about a year 18 months ago and the community is is quite opposed to us writing checks to for-profit businesses for almost any reason unless they're giving specifically something back to the community the the exemption from that is if it's an emergency like COVID. And I think this absolutely qualifies. It's an emergency like COVID. <laughs> no, no, no concern. I mean, there, there's, there is actually a small segment, I think it was 20% who said, even then we shouldn't do it. But that, there's always gonna be 20% who say we shouldn't do something. But I'm nervous, uh, but I'm a little bit nervous about, you know, the, the person who works one day a month and gets $500 and so forth. And so uh, what, what I think would be useful is and thinking about the idea that we don't, that some people are going in Deb, that you mentioned this and others did too, that some people are only going to get a portion of what they were lost. If they were not working for two weeks and they're making $20 an hour and they're full time, that's, you know, six, I think that's $1,600. Um, so, but I don't think we can afford to pay and it actually mechanically, because we don't want to go over the 600, I think 500 should be the maximum. So what I would do is say like something in effect if you if you worked if if you expected if you either missed or if you missed or will in the future miss because of a future closing and it's really only the farmers market um I pick a number uh 20 uh, 15 hours a week will give you 250 dollars if you miss if you missed more than 30 hours a week will give you 500 dollars or something like that, and 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 and, and, and thirty or more, you get five hundred. Uh, thirty or less. System. Sorry, or or maybe it's twenty. I'm trying to think of twenty. It's a tiered. Anyway, those two two levels, you get two hundred fifty or five hundred, and and then I just want to tie that to point number ten. I think the easiest way to do this is have the applications come in over a very short period of time from the employees. We then take each list by company because we're asking on the form for the companies and say, Deb, or Joe, Sam, Joe's daughter, Sam, here are the seven people who applied. 
these five people applied in the more than 25 hours and these two people applied in the minus in, in the lower category, here's how much we're planning to give them. Would you please validate these assumptions? And the employer gets to, you know, to, to, to validate that. Yes. So I would propose those two, and we just have to pick the number of hours. Um, I would propose those changes. All the other changes in my view are, are, I mean, all the other things are fine. Larry, sorry, uh, Larry first and then Deb. And then me. And yeah, then this is, uh, um, we, we seem to be using this um, requirement of a W-9 as a constraint. I are Does somebody here know that, in fact, our giving money to employees requires a W-9? That's for independent contractors. Somebody, somebody knows that answer? Yes. The, if, okay. the town, if the town is going to write a check, they will, they require that we issue a W-9, which I believe is because they are required to. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, the town they are, told that's, us, that's the law. That the, the town told us that we it's gonna be very hard for them to process this program because they're gonna to have to issue W-9s to everybody. Well, we said it's less than 600. They said, oh, if it's less than 600, we don't have to do W-9s. Plus Larry at 500 with no W-9 is tax free at 601, they're paying taxes on it. Yep. Yeah, and the other piece, the other piece of it, I mean, we're using it as a constraint in a way, but it's not because of the numbers of people you right. know, I just, yeah. I just wanted, I just wanted to know because I, I did some looking into it and I couldn't, I couldn't find where that right. type of transfer right. was required at W nine, but it, whatever. It, only because it's they're not a nonprofit, so if they get any who's, kind who's of who's not a nonprofit, the, the employees. If you give the employees five hundred dollars, they're not a nonprofit business. You know, they have to rent. They, they have to. Then that doesn't yes, matter. It's a W nine for anybody you pay, unless it's a nonprofit. Um, so I just would like to make a, a suggestion and whatever people think. Um, I like the tier system, John. I, I would like to say that the the tier, the lower tier, the 250 is available after the other tiered is paid. And if we still have the money, because I, I you know, it would be a shame if because of the lower tier and some of the people who are in the higher tier don't get paid because we don't have enough. Uh, okay, uh, that, uh, let's see how people feel about that, but it's certainly a reasonable, understand the objective of it. It's a reasonable suggestion. Joe? Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, pardon the uh, court time this morning, um, but this is an EDC program. And as best as I can understand, and from what I understand from Joe, again, I could be wrong about this, that applying for this EDC program does not exclude them from the ability to apply to HUB in addition. That's right. Correct. So, you know, we will gladly assist, but this assistance doesn't mean they cannot apply to HUB in addition to us. So uh, I think that's an important thing to remember. <clears throat> Todd. Yeah, and in, in a legal sense, there would be no way for the hub to know because this money is like as if you hand your anybody on the street five hundred dollars or two, whatever it is, like there is no reporting for it. There is no requirement to report to the IRS. I mean, you actually should, but they don't have to. So unless the town was going to go and give some list, which sounds shady and weird, like there would be no way for the hub to know unless someone said yes or no anyway of their own accord. It's 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 money that is untraceable in that way once it goes out the door. As far as I don't think that's necessary goes. anyway. Uh, right. I think they can. You no, know, it could be above board, and it still wouldn't matter. I don't think. Okay. All right. I, I think. By the way, just so people are aware, th there is there is going to be there. Sorry, there. There is going to be a governing law about what the EDC is, what type of information the EDC is required to disclose publicly. Now, that doesn't mean that we have to promote it or publish it, but what information I should say that is accessible to the public if they request it. And that law is going to determine whether or not we have to, um, you know, if, if, if the hub asked, you know, did Patrick Fultz get $500 or please give us a list of the people who did. The, there is a law that will say whether we're required to do that or whether we're allowed to not not say like that. an FOIA kind of thing. 
Yeah, it's open, the open meeting law in Vermont. Yeah, it, like the FOA, okay. exactly. So I just want to cool. be able to make clear, I don't know, there are certain pieces of information that are considered, there are certain pieces of information that don't, that are protected from that. And I don't know what yeah. th that this is, because I don't think that the law kind of considered that. So I don't think it's going to happen. We're not going to publish a list proactively. There's no requirement that we do that. But but I just want people to be aware that that, that, that could happen. I just want people to be aware of that. P Patrick, and then I want to see if we can bring this to this this part of it to a conclusion. Patrick. Okay, I was gonna I was gonna propose that we did 20 hours for the for the 500 and at least 10 hours for the 250. So you got 10 to 10 to 19 hours for the 250. Uh, I might even make it 200. And then uh, 20 and up, you do the 500. I think that would be a good breakout if people think the same thing from a from a math standpoint it's two hundred dollars versus four hundred dollars uh, per week Todd I would just do 12 because the half day folks are at sometimes they're at five hours sometimes they're at four so if someone's going into 12 they're like they're really full-time half-time employees you know what I mean it's like they're going Monday Tuesday Wednesday so I would just advocate for 12 so 12 to 19 and then yeah. 20 and up yeah 12 hours, you get 250, more than, uh, sorry, below, tw more 12 to less than 20, you get 250, 20 or more, you get 500. Yes. That's the proposal. And, and what, I like what Deb said, let's, we'll do the, the 20 or more first, and then what's left goes to the, to the 12 to 19s. Let me just suggest that we divide up the voting on that, just so we can, we don't have to have long discussions to see who's going to convince who, let's just see what we initially think. First is let's just vote on, I think the program that is here, we've been discussing point six, seven, and eight. Um, and it's sort of, we have basically got point seven, must have whisked 12 hours in missed or will miss, right? Due to flood. And that's weekly. Oh. That's, do we care if it's weekly or do we care if it's I don't actually care but that was brought up earlier. I think it total because if, what, if no, somebody's missed work the, for two weeks and got a total of 12 hours and somebody missed one week but the, you know I don't I don't know if yeah it, I, I have fine with it so 12 hours less than 20 250 I'm just writing this down or 20 plus 500 and then let's just vote then separately on a separate question. So that you can vote for, you know, so that you don't have to vote against that um, separately. Do we do we do the second? Do we fulfill all requests for the second group first, and 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 let's discuss that one separately. Is that all right, Deb? So we'll get to that. So yeah, definitely. are there any other suggestions about uh, of what's on the page here? Just take a quick, a quick yeah. check here. John, we, I I, we just I, wanted I to change item three because it the not I mean I don't think we need a number there. It was just no, doing I, the math, three that math for information. Nor nor number two because we're duplicating. Right. 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 <laughs> so John, I make a motion we accept this for the, the tier levels and the dollar amounts. Well, how about if we accept everything that's on the page? Okay. We're, all, we're also accepting the uh, that, that's what I meant, actually. Okay. I, yes. I propose we accept everything on the page. Okay. Is there a, is there a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, if we're going to really vote on it, we, how about that last sentence in six? Is that necessary? Yeah. Right. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. No. No. Yeah, right. I'm. I'm. Yeah. We're we're voting on the substance of it. I. I think actually now we're pretty close to the actual words. But there's some. There's some. Yeah, there's a few words missing, but not substantive. Okay, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 How do we have how do we have eight people? I thought we only have seven. Patrick's is still here. Well, no, I, haven't, I, I haven't I haven't I'm I'm officially oh, okay. Sorry, done okay, as yeah. of today, John. I will I will send you an official letter today. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm officially fine. moving today. <laughs> what are you on an island somewhere, John? You're just confused. <laughs> all those in favor. Sorry, I didn't see. Hi. Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Okay. Um, what about the processing the 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 
the bigger ones first. I have a, I, I'm okay with that. I, I guess I'm, I, I, I'm okay with it, but it feels for someone who worked 19 hours, they lost $380. And, to, you know, I, it just feels like we're trying to spread the, I, I don't know that full-time. Yeah, may I jump in here for a second? Yeah, anyway, I'm just, I'm just hesitant. Think, I don't, I don't think, feel strongly about it, Joe. I don't think any employee is going to say, no, I only work 19 and a half hours. They're going to say they work 20. And I don't think any employer is going to say, no, you didn't. You only worked 19 and a half. I mean, this it, it's going to jump into that category. What if really? not, someone who worked, you know, someone who worked eight hours or well, someone yeah. who worked 12 hours? Yeah, that's different. But if it gets up close to to no no no, no. I I'm not close to twenty I'm, hours, they're going to jump into that category. Might be I know my hour. point. My point isn't that we're setting a line. Obviously, any program that has two categories has the problem of what if you're close to the line. I'm just wondering yeah, why it is that we should favor the people who are working more hours. Because that's think, probably their income, their main income. Yeah. Whereas yeah, if, if you. If you're yeah. if you're working one or two, you know, one day a week, you probably have income from other sources. Else. That's exactly on point. Point. Okay. Sure. We only right. have so much. I don't Lots think Lots of cash economy works, in Vermont. I right, so yeah. yeah. you make anybody who works eight hours a week is gonna not understand this. That's you right. know, like okay. oh Deb, can you make can, can you make the motion then? To, wait, wait, stand by stand by before this. I just lost for the the hub and anything else like that or go, should we put an assistance page as an addendum to the literature that we put out well the messaging of this we can just we can discuss okay okay so deb do you want to make the motion then that just repeat what you said before well well i think i think it, it in in lieu of us only having forty five thousand dollars this is the reason why we're doing the tiered system so in and excuse me, because we only have that, um, the tiered system is during the review process, the people with two, 20 plus uh, come first. And then after that, we um, we you know, process the 12, 12 and less. Point of procedure on this, what would be the processing time where then we decide that we're going to go and release to the next tier right so that was the one week process the one week so okay. we know what we have within one week and then if we have more money we can keep it open but you know well it's really not within one week it's really i think what we're saying is is that we you have one week to submit your application we get all right. the applications in we check them with the businesses we, we we check them with the businesses if 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 there's if it's forty five thousand dollars or less, we give everyone what they have, what has been verified with their employer, what they've requested, and we keep the applications open. If there's less than forty five thousand dollars, we meet the needs of the five hundred dollar people first, give the remainder to the two hundred fifty dollar people in proportion, yeah. and 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 don't have any further. And, and don't we have just any further. can we just change yeah, the language to happening. prioritizing rather than so we prioritize. You know, so we'd process everything all at once. We just prioritize the, the people that lost the, the higher tier of hours. So that, I like that. because I do think the urgency is an issue. Yeah. I mean, it starts to become yeah. $250 so, in three months is, you know, I know that's- yeah. processing all at but, once, one week, yeah. Yeah, it's all in one week, but, and and if we can process both of them and still have money less, left, we keep it open. You know, it, we basically keep it open until the 45 is, is done. Yes? Yeah. 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 So I, like I think I think this is pretty miss pretty correctly and misspelled. Okay, process all at once. The application period is one week. Prioritize the higher tier if it's sufficient funds. Perfect. Great. Great and then job. we would do the remaining tier in proportion. So if there's if there's only enough to give everyone in the two hundred fifty dollar tier two hundred, we give them two hundred. We don't. Yeah. There's no first oh, well come first serve. Yes. Yeah. Well done. Okay. All right, that so makes does everyone sense. understand that? All right. So then, yeah. can you... sorry. So can we then just? I second that. <laughs> okay. Fine. So we're now just voting on point number hold five. On, hold on. Hold on. I I need to ask a question there. Sorry. If I'm applying and I think it's two fifty and then I get two hundred, 
something has to be communicated to that person. And up to two hundred fifty dollars. Huh? Yeah. I think we just up say to. Two. Because if you say we were going to, you know, we have to aggregate it to two hundred, and the person's like, "Wait, I thought I was going to get two fifty. Something explain, has to be said." To explain this to everyone in advance. How's that? And then we'll figure out. What yeah, it's based on demand, right? And, yeah. and supply well, and demand. Well, this is actually a know. whole different question because we actually voted on 250 and 500 until we run out. And what you're saying is we're going to see how many people and divide it evenly, which is a different different yeah. thing. No, 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 no. We, we, we voted that the two levels, sorry, we voted that the two levels would be 250 and 500. And what we're now saying, yeah, sorry, I, I, I thought it was clear. We, If we want, we can just simply vote on the, on this whole thing now that we've discussed it. If are you make you're making a technical legal point Marion about whether we No, no, I'm I'm actually asking a clarifying point which is um are we saying that we're going to give 500 and 250 until we run out or are we saying no. if we get more applications we're going to divide by the total and split it up in some way so Neither. that some people might get less than 250. Yes, but we're going to divide up only the 250, not the 500. If if sorry. There's three possibilities. We have more. We, we have more money than we have applications. People will then get five hundred and two fifty, depending on what they applied for. The second possibility is we have enough to give everyone who applied for five hundred five hundred, but not enough to give everyone who applied for two fifty two fifty, and therefore we will give everyone who applied for five hundred five hundred, and we will give everyone who applied for two fifty the amount remaining in the pool divided by the number of people who asked for two fifty. So they might get 240 or 230 or 200 or whatever. The third possibility is that we don't have enough to give 500 to every person who applied for 500, in which case we will divide the entire pool among the 500 people and the $250 people will get nothing. That is that is consistent with That's the word that we used as to what we yeah. wanted to do. That's how the math would work out. Now, we don't have to do it that way. I'm yeah. just explaining what I interpreted. We want to We want to pay the 500 people first before we pay the 250 people. And that's because we're assuming the hardship is on the 20 plus hour employees in a greater right. way because they're yeah. in those jobs, right? They have okay. well, because they're, 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 those, are, those are more important part of their income. The other people presumably have other income. Yeah, I I I, that, I, I understand what you're saying. I, I agree that, with that. That's, I'm, I, I support that. I don't think I fully understood that that's what we, okay. how we were thinking about it. So thank you for clarifying that. I, All right, well, I do, do you, you want to ask because it came, it was different last night. We ended up at a different place um, or the two nights ago, which was that we said when we start to, to, to change it, it becomes less valuable and that we want to do 500 as, as a minimum for the full-time employees. Um, and rather than continue to say you, you get up to $500 based on blah, blah, blah. And that if we need to raise more money, then we figure out that you know, do we change something to, to raise more money? I think well, we're, we're that's, probably- that's, that's exactly the way it was stated. If we need to meet, if we, if we don't have enough money to satisfy the applicants, then as it was said to me at the meeting yesterday, we'll just raise more money. So she, no, no, hold, 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 hold on one second. Hold on one second. There's a royal we in there that is really important. Yeah. yeah. Right? The hub yes. can do the hub can do whatever the hub wants, that, whether it's that, spending right. money or raising money. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. The hub. Okay. That's fair. The hub cannot take money that people who work for the hub, Jill, who also work for the EDC, cannot take money that has been voted on for housing and allocated to anything but the program that was specified to. Period. Right. Full stop. That's right. But she wasn't suggesting that, John. She wasn't according suggesting to Deborah's that. Note, she was suggesting according to Deborah's note, that hub would raise more money. Period. According to Deborah's note, she suggest that. Both. And I'm sure that Jill didn't do yes, it. And we're not connected to the hub. I, 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 I'm sure. I mean, the bottom line is we're not connected to the hub. The possibility the for the EDC to consider, not for her to do. Okay, first of all, we're, why are we even including the hub in this decision? I they agree. had nothing to do with us. Throw the hub out. They're going to do what the hub does. Correct. We're not. We're not talking about the hub. We're talking about the EDC and what we can do with Correct. our money. So the hub's not part of it. We just need to decide: Are we giving a minimum amount of five hundred or two fifty, or are we dividing it up? At, and, and I'm just sorry, I'm being short, but we're running out of time. So no, no, we don't. We don't. We can't answer that question, Marion, because we, we. Just to be clear, we don't have any more money. 
And in, the only way we can raise more money is to implement another options tax, which the voted. Marion, you're, you're muted. So I understand that what I'm saying is there's two ways we have a total amount of money. We can either say we're going to give 500 and 250 out until we run out of money, or we say we take the total number of people who applied and divide it and give them up to 500 based on that. There's two ways of looking at this, and we have to decide which one we're doing. The first Fix the way, number or, or right. there aren't two ways, Marion. There are more than there's three. Ways. There no. are more than two yeah. ways to do it. And the, uh, you're right. There's three ways yeah, okay. or more. And so it, it seemed like. Yeah, there are more than three ways, but it seemed like the idea of of meeting as much of the need as possible of the five hundred dollar people before we met as much of the need as possible for the two hundred fifty dollar people was something was a principle that people favored. Given yeah. that and the fact that we have we we cannot raise more money it, 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 right now. Given those two facts, there's really only one way to satisfy those two facts of the various ways in which we could pay this. And that is that if we have not enough money, let me work from the bottom. If we have not enough money to give $500 to every $500 applicant, we take however much money we have and give them each the same amount, 490, 480, 470. If after doing that, we have money left over, we give as much as we can to the $250 people. 250 if we have if we have enough or 240 or 230 if we have money left over after that we extend we continue to accept applications and we continue to pay them according to the same rules that we did in the first that i think is the only way that can meet if i'm reading the what the group would like to the words that we'd like to the way we'd like to prioritize that's the only that's i think the only way to meet it precisely so i would is, are you okay with that, Marion? Does that make sense? And that is different. Oh, yeah. That wasn't I just clear. wanted to clarify it. Yeah. Okay. All right. It wasn't clear, and yeah. now now it is clear. So it was you. not clear. I agree. Okay. So let's give, vote on it before we get messed yeah, up again. Yeah, given that, a lot of words. I'm, I'll make the motion to do it exactly that way, and the words on this page don't quite get to that, but they're pretty close. Is there a second? Second. second. All right. Then any further discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I didn't see everybody. Joe, you're opposed. No, I'm not. Oh, you're not. Sorry, I have a I have bad internet connection. <laughs> I, no, I'm not. Bit... I raised in jo favor. He, okay, Joe's sorry. Just, he did. Joe's just uh, he's just relaxed. No, no, <laughs> I just got a message. My internet connection. My did internet you connection. Did that on purpose. Is on... Did that on purpose. <laughs> no, 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 no. My internet. Is Unanimous bad. eyes, John. All right. Uh, I all right. Let me just. <laughs> this is Can a I really suggest... good program. Good work, everyone. This is going to help people. Yeah. yeah. I'm just going to suggest, in the interest of time, that we voted on. I, I just want to call attention to this because going forward, as we think about the actual process, we included this point. The EDC will validate with the employer. I mentioned that verbally. It was in Deb's note. It's on this slide. Unless anyone is uncomfortable with that or needs further debate, I mean, we did vote on it technically, then I would just going to suggest that we simply pick a small group of people to finalize what's on this next page, which is a simple application form. Um, I, I think it's fine the way it is. It gives us the information that we need to go back to the employer. Especially who is your employer and how many hours did you lose? You know, we're going to have to do the 12, 20 thing. Um, and I think this is fine. But if there's any tweaks to it, I think we could delegate to two people to get this form finalized by Tuesday morning, which is when the select board is gonna hear our recommendations. 5,000 for the messaging, 45,000 for this pool, executed the way we talked about, and then they won't have to approve the form. So we don't need to debate the form if there are two people who would like to design it and if the rest of us are comfortable delegating to those two. And Deb, since I hate to put this on you, but you did the first version of it, do you mind being one of the two people? Well, I, I wanted to actually ask if somebody else knows how to do a Google form. I can do it, but I'm also doing all the videos, you know, that's, so I'm super. Yeah, all right, that's fine. But let's have someone, no, I mean, I can do the technical part of it. That's fine. Um, okay, but, yeah, I do the technical who, part of it, but I'm happy to be involved otherwise. Okay, so who, so you, who, just to design it, did you make sure these are the right, or maybe we just keep, these are the questions. Um, these are fine with me. Does anyone disagree? I just, I'm sensitive because I know Marion actually, um, I'm sure Marion has to, Hard, hard stop. You're at your office, Marion, unless you have a beautiful home office. 
Do we want <laughs> do we want average hours work weekly or do we want something more specific? That was before the last conversation, so that does need to change. So, so it, we're going to change this, and I and I'm going to um, uh, we need someone needs to consider this. I we have to be very careful about what we promise. I, we, we, I'm not saying we shouldn't promise it. I just, we have to investigate the law. I don't want to tell, you know, there's a possibility this information is- We keep vulnerable. it confidential unless law dictates otherwise, something along those things. And we have Larry, attorney Larry here can come up with something great. <laughs> well, but I think we, yeah, okay. Attorney. Um, so we have to change this, yeah. And this, by the way, I think is, is it's, they don't have to, yeah, this, the employer will verify this. So, so we can take that off the form. Right. I think it's good to put it on the well, form. Let's, up, so let's update the form with department. the two people. I'll help on the form. Let's up, let's let everyone go. Okay. Let's let's get this form going. We'll send it out. We'll do what we can do that thing where people can update it online, maybe like we've done in the past. Yeah, this uh, this is simple. I mean, nobody yeah. and make the changes. Is that? I don't even think we have to come back to the group. I mean, there's nobody is. This is we're now really nitpicking. No. Todd, if you want to work on it, no. I'm fine. Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, they're gone. Fine. it's all good to me personally. Yeah. By the way, the, the checks can be picked up in town hall. Um, I yeah. think you just want to put a note of like, you know, check if you want to pick up and check if you want to send, you know. Check box. Yeah, we're doing details now. Yeah, okay, okay. We're doing details. I agree. I, you know what? I'll take care of this. Wait, 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 wait. That, that, wait a minute. That, Wait a minute, that point about picking up checks at the town hall was discussed yesterday at the meeting, and the point was brought up. And just let me reiterate what was said at the meeting is that some people might be too embarrassed to walk into town hall and say, can I have a check? They so, can choose to have it mailed then. Yeah, so yes, exactly. So let's mail it out. Well, no, no, let's give them the choice. If they're embarrassed, yeah. check the box. Right, mail doesn't choice. work in Woodstock, so that's a bad idea. No, 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 no. We're gonna we're gonna have to check. We're checking the box. We'll we'll have them. Check I'm just the box. I'm just sharing with you what was discussed yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's great. All right, I I'm happy to just get this done. This is easy for me to do. So. Great, great. Okay, I great. think we're done. This is great. Sorry for all of these meetings, but I think the way no, we great. problem solved Thank this you. is really good. Best picnic benches ever. Motion to adjourn. Second. Bye. Um, Enjoy your vacation, John. Yeah, John. Enjoy your vacation, Thanks, John. John. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thanks, everybody. Tonight is the webcast. Don't forget. Oh, got it. I couldn't understand what you said. Tonight is the webcast. webcast. Tonight. Tonight. I don't have to attend. Uh, you don't have to attend. It's just at 7 o'clock tonight. Susanna Stein has organized it for the local businesses, and I hope. Yeah. Yeah. So, Joe, I sent you an email about that. Um, there will yeah. be a, a recording, right, available? That was a nice email also yeah. that you wrote in the listserv. All right, good. All right, thanks, guys. Take care. Thanks, thanks. guys. Bye.